Good shot, Chad. Well, welcome back, everyone. This is Eric from Moss Pond and Gun. And today we're going to be covering the Atlanta Cutlery Martini Henry Mark IV. One of the things that I've always found to be very special about these types of firearms is that they cover what's known as the transitional period. And with the transitional period, it was kind of a period of time where they weren't quite to small bore, uh, smokeless powder guns yet, but they weren't quite away from muzzle loaders yet. So I really find it interesting, this era, uh, this gun was made in uh, 1888. So uh, definitely a late transitional era, uh, black powder gun. As you know, uh, the Mosin kind of came around uh, in 1891 and several other smokeless guns around the uh, you know, 1800s, late 1800s. Um, it is a British military firearm. Uh, this particular gun is a part of the Nepalese cachet that was brought back uh, from overseas. And they are for sale at Atlanta Cutlery, of course, but uh, I picked this particular one um, up at Atlanta Cutlery. Um, it is the long lever variant, which is the later version of the gun. The earlier versions had a short lever, all right? The ammunition that it uses is a 577 450 Martini Henry cartridge. Uh, the original load utilized about, uh, I'm sure some people are gonna call me here on this, but I believe about a 480 grain projectile, uh, usually paper patched, with a grease cookie and 85 grains of black powder. This particular bullet mold uh, that I used to create this ammunition was actually cut on, off of a custom cherry uh, that was custom made off an original pooled Martini Henry military cartridge. So uh, we're actually using some very specialized reloading components to reload for this cartridge. This particular gun is a cleaned and complete gun, so that's pretty much as you're gonna, as you see this gun, that's about the type of condition of gun you expect to get. Uh, they really are wonderful guns, full of history. Um, as you know, the uh, Zulus kind of uh, had a little bit of a time with the you know, British soldiers, uh, you know, in a couple of battles and everything like that. Uh, one of the battles, the, the British definitely got their butts handed to them, but on the second battle, they, uh, they did quite well. So uh, the gun does have a lot of history and uh, they're just really neat guns. You know, you can't shoot a martini without thinking about Zulus running at you. Once the guns are safety checked, uh, they can definitely be shot with no problems. Um, but I'm just gonna give you a word of caution. If you're going to shoot this gun, uh, it is definitely not for the faint of heart in terms of the reloading practices that you have to look at to do it. Um, the brass forming is a little bit of a pickle. Um, the bullet diameter is very specific. It needs a very certain type of bullet diameter. Um, it is a black powder contained cartridge, so you have to be very careful when loading black powder in a cartridge because you can't have any air in it. So um, as long as you're willing to pay attention uh, to that stuff, then you should be okay. Um, the load can be used with a 24 gauge brass shot shell hole. Uh, these are Magtech shot shell holes that are formed down in the martini die. And then we've got a custom 468 cut mold with a custom cherry that was made off of an original um, bullet that we, we used. And um, of course, it's made out of pure lead and we're running 90 grains of 2F Pyrodex Premium. The way that you can tell the designations on them, on the side of the gun, you've got the crown, and you've got, you know, this one was made at Enfield in 1888, and then it's got the Mark, all right, being a Mark IV, a uh, later version. Um, very good quality guns. They do use uh, basically a modified Metford rifling, which is kind of a, like an odd style of rifling that's almost like polygonal but at the same time, it, it's got like these very oddly shaped lands and grooves. Uh, I'll probably get you a bore shot so you can see how that rifling looks. It's very distinct. Um, very neat guns, enough talking. Uh, let's blast with it a little bit. All right, Martini Henry Mark IV. To load it, pull the lever down. It drops the breech block and exposes it, the chamber. Take your round, put it in. It pushes the ejector forward, close the breech, it's ready to shoot. Pull down smartly on the lever, the rifle ejects by itself.
Definitely does the trick. Let's blow up a few things with it. All right, let's see what a 577 450 Martini Henry cartridge does to a little watermelon there. That's right, people, we did it. All right, let's see what happens to this chicken when it gets hit with the 577 450. Just so you guys know, this is the most morbidly disgusting thing that we've ever done on this show. Oh, right through the chest. All right, one more time. All right, we're gonna hit him one more time near the giblets. All right, so we're gonna take a few shots with the uh, Martini Henry at 100 yards here off hand and see how well this old girl will do. Just about right on the money. A little high. Not too shabby. I think it's about time to move up to 440. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's go Let's try go. it out. All right, we decided that we would build some air castles today, and uh, we've got the Martini Henry set up off the bench here. We're going to shoot at a quarter size D28 silhouette at 440 yards open sights. Let's see if we can connect with it a couple of times. This is a long way. These sights are not set up for target shooting, that's for sure. I saw it hit just to the right. Just low and left in front of the target. Not missing by much, man. Mm -hmm. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's see if we can land another one. Well, it took a while for that one to get back. Yeah, it did. Windage was good, still a little bit low in front of the target, though. A little low? Yep. Got you. You just missed the right side of it. It, looks, it sounds like it hit the chain. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Good shot. Good shot, Chad. Heck yeah, man. It landed right on top of mine. Yeah, that was where you said to aim. That's well, it. Try, try her again. Good shot, Chad. That shot landed about six inches higher than the one you just fired. It's putting him in there. Right on the right upper hand shoulder, man. Got the wind blowing him. Ooh, you hit barely just low, right below it. All right, Chad connected with the plate quite a few times with the martini. I'm gonna try a couple more shots myself and uh, see if we can connect with this thing. It's a long way for this gun. Didn't miss by much, man. It just slings them right in there. Just low and to the right. Got gotcha. you. About a half a plate width both ways. Okay. Just low and left. Well, people, one thing that I can say about the Martini Henry is that it is an awesome gun. I uh, definitely want to thank Atlanta Cutlery for uh, giving me a chance to go in and select a rifle uh, that worked for me. And this is one that I picked out of their uh, clean pile. And uh, I'm glad I got it. It's a very sweet shooting rifle. Um, we got it to connect at long range a little bit, which I was very surprised. As, as crude as these sights are, and as far away as that gong is, being a quarter size D28, I was really surprised to see it connect that well at long range. So um, if you like these videos, leave your comments below. Let us know if you'd like to see more of this style of video with the Millsurps, which this is really an area that uh, both myself, Barry, Chad, Ray, all of us at Moss, um, we're definitely into this type of stuff. So I have plenty of Millsurps. If there's something you want to see, let me know, and we'll get out here and film it. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please uh, rate, subscribe, leave your comments. And uh, we appreciate the support and we appreciate you watching.